phone calls are welcome. I want to check in with uh, Senator Roy Blunt, who is in D.C., and he is co-sponsoring a, uh, well, it's a bipartisan student loan solution because we know uh, these uh, student loan rates have just skyrocketed, and Senator Blunt is working on that, among other things. How are you, Senator? Yeah, I'm good, Jamie. Good to be talking to you this morning. Yes. So what about this Bipartisan Student Loan Certainty Act? What is that about? Well, this, you know, this is the student loan situation is another example of how uh, the Senate, uh, led by Harry Reid, just refuses to get the work done that needs to be done. Uh, Basically, the bipartisan solution uh, that I'm for uh, is also supported by the House of Representatives. It seems to be supported by everybody except uh, the majority uh, leader in the Senate uh, who wants to continue to make this an annual fight about whether student loans go up or not. And what our bill would do would just simply guarantee your loan rate at the time you get it for the life of the loan and not just for the subsidized Stafford loans, but for all the students that qualify for federal loans. You know, what the, uh, what the, admit, what one, the, the, the Harry Reid solution would only solve this problem for about 30% of the people that actually have a subsidized loan where our solution would handle it for all of the families, the middle class families, that as they take out these loans for them and their kids, need to have the best possible understanding of what it's going to take over time to pay this loan off. Give that rate uh, at a rate relative to the borrowing today and guarantee it for the life of the loan. It's not very complicated. I think it will eventually happen, but apparently uh, in the Senate these days you have to reject all the alternatives before you can actually solve the problem, and it's an embarrassment. Yeah, so right now uh, what it would require is that the interest rate would be fixed over the life of the loan, uh, and the cap for consolidated loans would remain at 8.25%. That's right. If you ever can want to consolidate all your loans, you could do that at that cap. But prior to doing that, the pieces of money that you borrow as you go to college one year after another, you know what that part of your student loan is going to cost interest rate, interest-wise until you pay it off, unless you decide at some point you just rather consolidate all of these into one loan with one payment. And that's something that any college graduate ought to be able to figure out, whether that's to their advantage or not to their advantage, uh, to do that. And, again, the real key for people listening is uh, that the, the Harry Reid solution is only for a fairly small portion of these loans that are federally subsidized as opposed to the 70% or so of the other middle-class families uh, that take advantage of these loans as a way for their kids to go to school, but they, too, need to know what it's going to take for them or their kid to pay this loan back. You know, most a lot of kids pay their own loan back, but they need to know when they get that loan what it's going to cost them. And it's like so many other things in Washington today, it's way more complicated than it needs to be, just like the administration's now making uh, all these excuses about why they can't uh, make their health care plan work. Uh, lots of excuses, but they've had three and a half years to figure out how to make this work. My view is it's not going to work. I never thought it was going to work. Uh, and I'd have, I'd permanently suspend this plan and find one uh, that would make the old health care system work better for people rather than continuing to head down uh, this bad path we're on on health care. Yeah. Now, you know, speaking of that, I mean, you knew it wasn't going to work. And uh, all indications are, especially when it comes to some uh, memos we've seen and everything else, is that uh, Obama and his team knew that Obamacare was ultimately going to be impossible to implement. Well, it certainly uh, appears that way, that they've had three and a half years to get ready to implement this six months from now, and suddenly they say, you know, we just, it's too complicated to do the, uh, the critical part of this where we, we now see that people get insurance at work if that's at all possible. Uh, and uh, I think it's one excuse after another. When you look at what they've done, there was something that long-term care called the CLASS Act. They decided about a year and a half ago what I said in the committee when we had the debate on this bill, which was this will not work. And they, oh, no, this will work, and it will actually make a lot of money. Well, they decided after they started looking at it, well, this is not going to work, so we're not even going to try to do this. And then a few months ago they said the small business exchange 
can't possibly be ready by the deadline, so we're going to put that off a year. And what they did uh, a week ago, Jamie, was particularly on the people that get their health care subsidized by taxpayers, they said we're not even going to have people have to verify their income. Uh, we'll just take their word for it, uh, and uh, you can get your subsidy based on what you tell us you make rather than what you can prove you make. And uh, that's how a lot of people got yeah. money, got in trouble uh, with home loans. They were listing income that they didn't have. In that case, they were listing too much. In this case, they might very well be listing too little income so that you and I as taxpayers would be paying more of their health care than the law uh, entitles them to or than anybody should be paying. Right. Gotcha. All right, Senator Blunt, uh, appreciate you joining us, and uh, thanks a lot for the effort on the student loans and on uh, spreading the news about Obamacare. So we appreciate it very much. Good to talk to you. Look forward to seeing you soon, buddy. All right, uh, me too. That is blunt.senate.gov.